Welcome to this edition of the Talk of Simsbury. My name is Dominique Avery. Today we're going to preview the General Assembly short session, which opens on Wednesday, February 5th and will end on May 7th. Joining me for this discussion are our local legislators, State Representative John Hampton and State Senator Kevin Whitgos, a Republican. John, John is a Democrat. Thank you both for being here. It's our pleasure. Thank you, Dominique. Happy it, New Year. <laughs> well, Happy New Year to you. If you, the audience, are looking for political controversy in this show, you will not get it because I worked at CTN, the television network which broadcasts the activities at the legislature, and I will freely confess that my interest for this preview of the legislative session is that it will be a civics lesson on how the legislature works. Kevin, you're in your sixth um, term in the legislature, your third in the Senate, your third in the, uh, after serving three years in the House. Um, what do you think is the public's biggest misconception or misunderstanding uh, about how the General Assembly works? Well, I think the public thinks that we're there all the time and that we can accomplish something in a day. And, you know, I, the old wise tale of government is uh, the slow red tape of government. Well, well, that's true. There's a huge process to go from A to Z, and folks think that we can circumvent that or expedite that. Um, it's set up for a reason, to make sure that all points of views are, are looked at throughout the committee process. So it just takes time. So it, things don't happen overnight in government. John? Um, thank you for having Senator and uh, Whitkos and I on the show, and it's great to be with, with Senator Whitkos and give us this opportunity. I think a misperception is that government doesn't care anymore. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of frustration on the national level and that we're not responsive. But I know Kevin and I love our jobs. We love serving our districts. Uh, my first week in office, I got an email from a constituent. My first or second email, picked up the phone and I called them and they were stunned that I called them. <laughs> And I said, well, of course I called you because I work for you. So I think what we want to drive home is that, you know, you see us in the supermarket, we represent you. And I don't want people, especially young people, to become jaded right. about government and that they can't pick up the phone. And uh, we're always impressed when people come to the Capitol and they call us, when they write to us. Um, that's what government's about, it's a partnership. And the other thing is most people think that we can't get along. They said, you know, would you guys get something accomplished? Well. Believe it or not, in Hartford, 93% of the things that we do are done in a unanimous manner. It's that 7% where maybe the parties differ, but it's the 7% that gets almost 95% of the, of the media. So for the most part, we work uh, in conjunction and tandem with each other, and we agree. We, we pass good legislation in Connecticut. That's, that's really true, that um, the headlines are about the disagreement. Right. right? So um, I think... I. I think that a lot of people don't understand how the process works, that there are committees and, and how legislation is introduced. Maybe we could, without being too technical, talk a little bit. Uh, both of you um, serve on various committees. Uh, Kevin, you serve on the General Law Committee. Um, you're the ranking member there, I believe. Ranking member means what? If the ranking mean? member means it's the minority parties. Um, chief spokesperson, if you will. It's similar to that in the majority party, who's the chairman. So in the General Law Committee, Senator Paul Doyle, who's from Wethersfield, um, in, in Connecticut right now, the Democrats outnumber the Republicans, so the Democrats chair the committee. And on the Republican side, since we're, the, we're in the minority, the chief uh, or the highest person that serves in that committee is called the ranking member, whether they're a House ranking member or a Senate ranking member. Okay, is well, that that's by longevity. Excuse me. Is that I always assumed it was by longevity. No, they choose who they, they cho want. Uh, they do. Generally, your leadership in your caucus will choose who okay. they want as, <clears throat> your, as an assignment. So you're on the general law committee, and um, what does that mean? What does the general law committee deal with, and uh, are there are there things that we can expect to come out of the general law committee this year that are sort of hot topics? Right. Well, each of the different committees have different state agencies that report uh, through to them. Uh, the, the major, uh, I guess, state committee that uh, we see is the Department of Consumer Protection. Uh, general law oversees them, and, and that has an impact maybe here in Simsbury 
uh, as you saw that through um, one of the local regulation uh, regulatory boards in town that they approved um, for medical marijuana. Now, mm -hmm. medical marijuana is um, is uh, overseen by the Department of Consumer Protection. So, uh, those regulations and things would come through. So that was your big issue last that. year. Well, alcohol also. Right. Um, the regulation of Sunday sales for for liquor mm -hmm. uh, comes under the purview of the. Um, uh, the general law committee, as does licensing for home improvement contractors, those types of issues, pharmacies. Uh, general law basically uh, oversees uh, the Department of Consumer Protection in that aspect. Thank you. I think, I think that clarifies sure. a lot of things and might help people. Uh, John, uh, you are on the Aging Committee. Yes. And the Aging Committee, I think it's sort of self-explanatory, but can you tell us a little bit about um, yeah, absolutely. what um, you deal with there? Well, I'm a freshman legislator, so I, I'm, I got a year under my belt, and it's a great experience. And as a freshman, as uh, you ask for, or so you, when you start your term, you ask for committee assignments, and I ask for education, public safety. Uh, Kevin and I both um, sit on public safety, and I ask for aging. And um, the issue fascinates me, and it fascinated me um, as a selectman and did a lot of work on behalf of seniors in Simsbury. And I, I think it's an underserved area. We are literally going to see a senior tsunami in the next 10, 15, 20 years. Um, preparing it's all the baby boomers age. All the baby age. boomers. And we got to make sure that their health care is uh, first rate, that their housing is first rate. I'm meeting a lot of seniors in their 50s and 60s who want to work. Um, they don't want to retire, and but they can't break into the market. I'm almost 50. Does that mean I'm a senior? You're not a senior okay. yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, people ask us all the time, well, you do so much work for seniors. And, you know, I say, well, we're getting older. Right. Sure. And, but we're also dealing with aging parents and um, transitioning parents to home care. Um, this was a big year for, for aging because we created um, or brought back the Department of Aging. Um, we worked with, with Edith Prague. Edith Prague. Uh, working closely with the Connecticut Commission on Aging, um, my, my first bill, which was introduced, was creating a task force. I was introduced and passed on Alzheimer's disease, preparing us for the ravages of this illness that grows and grows. So um, it's a fascinating issue. They tell you, as a representative or as a senator, to focus eventually on certain issues because, as Senator Whitcos knows, you just get bombarded with everything from public safety to the budget to the environment. So I'm finding, you know, aging a very fascinating area um, of exploration, and um, you know, the issues just don't stop. And I think it's great that you're, you're putting this on a show today, so that people can understand how the legislative process works. So I'll eventually vote on bills if they make it through the whole process that went through the aging committee. But it's the committee that has, we'll say, the committee of cognizance of that subject matter that really determines what goes to and what's not, and that's where the, the nitty gritty work is done. Whether the public hearings are held there so people can come in and testify or submit testimony and that's where the bill is uh, the legislators have some input at that particular point of time and then it goes out to the various other committees and most of the time uh, they just pass it through either yes or no without changing it too much so the the real hard work yeoman's work is done at the committee level so if somebody calls me up and says kevin uh, what can you tell me about this particular subject matter if i don't serve in that committee i don't have the, the breadth of knowledge that a committee member does. So I'll go research it just like they will, and I'm sure they'll learn how to go and do research a, a subject matter bill. Yeah, there are a lot of committees there. Right. I mean, you use a, yeah. a lot of committees and a lot of bills. I mean, you serve. I think we have 17 we'll standing street. committees. 17 standing yeah. committees, public safety. Both of you are on public safety. You're on education. You're on general law, and you're on finance, revenue, and bonding, right. a huge, complicated committee. So no legislator can possibly know about everything. Sure. So, so you concentrate on the bills in your committee. Right. So a bill, there is a bill introduced. Um, in the short session, it, it's, it has to come from the committee, Correct. right? not from an individual legislator. And then it either, sometimes it gets sent to a public hearing just to get a feel for it, and sometimes it's drafted and then goes to a public hearing, right? Is that, is that Yeah, it depends on um, the, if we've seen it before, and many times it takes three or four years for a bill to actually become a law or actually go through the process where it's actually voted on on the floor. So if, if somebody had contacted their legislator, they contact John and I, don't be discouraged that if we didn't get it through the first year because we're going to keep working at it. So hopefully by the third or the fourth year um, we would have uh, been legislative been familiar enough with it 
to feel comfortable in supporting the measure, whatever it happens to be. I want to get a little bit to the role of the public, which is at a public hearing, right? The public can come in and they can testify about a bill. How do they find out about a bill? Do they find out through a network of people or should they be looking at the website, um, the General Assembly's website? Or do you send out information or uh, is it just sort of by word of mouth? If there's some, there's an issue that's there's or in the of, newspaper. Um, or? Wealth of resources. First of all, I would highly recommend folks to go to the cga.ct.gov uh, website. And Kevin and I both have web pages. And um, uh, there's wealth of information. We send out mailings and email blasts. And um, but we encourage people again to call us. You know, I've heard from a couple of constituents who have ideas for bills, and some. I don't know if you've ever submitted a bill that you was constituent based and saw it through the process. I know you've had more experience, but your constituents come up with some of the best ideas, and it's their government. So uh, it's really important that folks reach out, call. Um, you know, recently I just got a stack of letters this big on. Uh, pesticides in playing fields. All of a sudden, you know, that's a big issue. And um, it's great when people write in an email and stay engaged um, and stay informed. So, they, but people also have a role testifying. Absolutely. I, I think the best way <clears throat> that, that I would recommend to folks to, to track a bill is, as John said, go to www.cga.ct.gov. And on that's the legislature's website. You'll, if you click on committees, it shows you the, sub, the topic of the subject, whether it's education, finance, public safety, um, um, planning and development. So you click on the topic that you have an interest in, and then you go to the committee. Uh, then there's instructions as well. The, de the book, committee book, it says. You can go through all the different pieces of legislation that are available, write down the number, and then it shows you how to track it. So every time something happens to that bill, you'll get an email that says, this bill was passed out of this committee, it's now before this committee. And it will show you the dates and times if there's a hearing schedule as well. So you really kept informed. On, on, you know, with today's technology, you really got to be involved it's with true, the It's true, but you have to know something. And um, I, I think that the many members of the public might be interested, but they're intimidated. Yeah. They're intimidated <clears throat> by the website. They're intimidated by the, uh, by the uh, vocabulary. And I think they're intimidated by even coming to the legislature. Right. And that's yeah. why I'm going to uh, take a short break now. And CTN, where I formerly worked, has uh, the state's version of C-SPAN, has recently created some very interesting videos on testifying at the legislature. And I thought we'd take a minute to show you an excerpt uh, from their video on how to sign up for a public hearing. If you watch this, you will know and you won't be uh, intimidated. And uh, we'll be back uh, for more discussion. Although some hearings are held in different locations around the state, most are conducted in the Legislative Office Building. Also known as the LOB, it's located next to the state capitol in Hartford. Free, secure parking is available on the first level of the parking garage located behind the LOB. Most hearings are scheduled in the morning, but some take place in the afternoon or evening. Room assignments are posted on televisions throughout the building, along with the day's activities. This information is also in the Legislative Bulletin. Before testifying, you must sign up, usually at the LOB. Generally, the sign-up sheet is posted an hour before the hearing starts in the room where the hearing is to take place. It will ask for your name, the bill number or numbers you plan on testifying on, and sometimes whether you are for or against the bill. When a large crowd is expected for a public hearing, the sign-up procedures may vary. Sign-up may start early in the morning in the atrium lobby. Briefcases and other items may not be used to reserve a place in line and do not leave these items unattended. Over the years, committees have adopted more flexible procedures, the most significant being a lottery system, where it doesn't matter what time you get here because everyone has equal chance and equal access to draw that first number. And I think that's encouraged more people to come. Check the legislative bulletin for specific sign-up procedures for the hearing you plan to attend. A series of videos on how to testify is available on the CTN website at ct-n.com. Uh, back to our discussion here. Um, you were, while we were taking a break, you were talking about some other ways that um, uh, that people could contact you. If you just go over that quickly, and then I want to move on. Sure. Time if, is going if, fast. Again, if they go on the website, cga.ct.gov, 
and, and look up Representative Hampton or Senator Whitcoast, our phone numbers for our offices are there and just give us a call and our staff will help uh, you know, guide you through the process of setting yourself up electronically. So it's, it's very simple after that and then you don't have to do anything, you'll just get those and you can just click and read them. And you know, if a constituent reads an article in the paper, for example, recently in Simsbury, medical marijuana came up, and I think that was before the legislature a couple of years ago. Last year. And um, before I arrived, and, and you know, you, if you see that or a bill coming down the pike, you know, take note of it, call us, and ask us about details to testify. Um, we love sitting in public hearings and hearing from constituents, and it is intimidating. But you know, we represent you. Just. It can be a little scary at first, but you sometimes write testimony in bullets to kind of summarize your thoughts and feelings. Sometimes it's one or two sentences. Um, so, I mean, it's really that the CTN, the new CTN videos are really good. Very people solid. can yeah. look at their, it explains exactly what to do, and I really think people yeah. should take a look at it. But so now I want to go to, we've talked about some of the bigger committees, but each of you have a relationship to smaller committees. Um, Kevin, you are the ranking member of the Internship Committee. What is that and why should people be interested in that? Well, the Internship is a bipartisan committee, equal number of Republicans and Democrats, and it's for the college students to come and get a, a gain first-hand knowledge of how the legislature works. Generally, we have folks that are in the political science major, but uh, it will be any, any major that wants to apply, and they come and they spend a semester general, with the General Assembly working for uh, representatives and senators and, and learning firsthand how the process works and in the meantime they're getting college credits for it so it's a great avenue to uh, and it's also all it's an eye-opener uh, for many so, students so that come for the first time to so, learn how so government any, works right so for any parents who um, who have a who have kids who are interested in politics that's something that they should keep in mind and, and make sure their yeah, kids and the website that. that we gave earlier there's a link right to the um, internship committee it's a great program yeah and we it get is. great high caliber yeah, students so John before um, a long time ago you actually worked at the legislature yeah. as a clerk on the executive and legislative yes. nominations committee now that's also a minor committee a minor committee from the public's point of view because it's not really controversial what does it do and why is it important well, let me first start by saying it was great experience uh, and preparation uh, in addition to my service on the board of selectmen but working at the capitol you learn an incredible amount and uh, and creating relationships and working with people on both sides of the aisle that is an, a unique um, committee that processes processes all the gubernatorial and legislative appointments. So everything from high level commissioners when a new governor comes in or a new term, it's the governor's commissioner. You know, we have a vacancy on the uh, Veterans Affairs, we need a new commissioner. That commissioner will come through um, the executive and legislative nominations committee and be reviewed. And depending on the issue, will be asked questions relative to their background. Judges go ju through judicial, so Judi it's everything they other than the judiciary um, committee, right? judicial. So it's you know um, parole board, um, UConn board, state board of education, right. and uh, and the like. And um, that's yet another committee. Oh, did you serve on executive? I never did. Um, but it's an interesting committee, and um, well, it's a it's a place where the public can get to know the uh, appointees. They can, if they take the time to watch a hearing, they can actually hear um, the sort of like the newly, uh, Governor Malloy just appointed a new uh, a state police um, head of this, um, I forget, it's a very long title. Desp. Red Desp, right. right. Yeah. Um, and she comes from New York and she's head of corrections there and when her hearing comes up, you could you can actually either watch it on CTN or watch it on uh, repeat or watch it live and get to know the person because right. they they make a statement and they answer questions. Well, it's a great opportunity to plug CTN, and I know you were part of that growth. And it's hard to believe that that was only 12, 12 years ago. Thirteen. That people did not have the opportunity. It's like the value of SCTV to watch their government in action. And so many people talk to us, and as a selectman, they watch their meetings and how invaluable it is to be able to to engage with their government. And um, what, what a dramatic um, turn in, in, in a decade right. that people can turn on, I think it's 98, um, I'm always watching it. In you know, 98 we never, on, yeah. on cast, and, right. um, and But can, but can sit and watch it, and that's another way to access Okay, so now everybody says, oh, who would watch that? Do you have it? Do, do you think people watch it? Kevin? I honestly do. And at first, I was skeptical, but yeah. somebody would say, "I saw you on TV last night," and I'd give them a little quiz. I said, "What was I talking about?" And you were American Idol. About, yeah, <laughs> they would talk about 
what I had said during the debate on the Senate floor. So I said, wow, okay, that's great. And they do watch. And it's a great way to stay informed. And it's not just the um, General Assembly that's on CTN, too, as well. They have a lot of different guest speakers from the Mark Twain House where they're doing certain coverages. Forums, press conferences. Forums, press conferences throughout the state. So it's not just politics. Yeah, it's a great tool. It is. But it, but it is a way people can get connected to their government and can see what's happening. And so every time somebody says, you know, we can't do anything, we, well, maybe that's true of the federal government. The federal government is really big. But our local government and our state government, you can reach the two of you. You can reach your lawmakers. You can see what's going on. And it is in real time. So when we're actually voting on a piece of legislation, it shows you what the vote tally is and actually takes a picture of the screen so you can see how John and I voted. Uh, at that very moment. So that's the one thing we didn't get to. After this long committee process and the committee passes out a bill, then it goes to the House and the Senate. And that's when most people hear about it. But by that time, the bill has largely been um, drafted and, and crafted. And so. And it looks a little it, different than maybe. And, and often it looks <laughs> very a lot different. different. Yeah. Right. Don't go by the title. Uh, right. and, yeah, you know. sometimes the title can be completely different. And then you do have to watch CTN to figure out what it is because they will put a graphic up there explaining to you what the bill is. If right. the and that's called the dummy bill. And, that, and that's, right. you know, it's not to fool anybody. It's a standard practice that you need a, an avenue. If, if something pops up, an emergency in the, in the middle of the session, you can't just create something new. So. Um, there's generally one or two bills that each committee passes out. It's called a dummy bill, and it was just an original title, but the, the subject matter within that may change depending on if it's needed because it's they, needed. Because it would take too much time because they were still crafting right. it or figuring out what they were doing or still holding hearings or still talking with um, experts on trying to figure out what should be in there. Correct. It's not necessarily to fool someone, right. although there are things called rats. Mm -hmm. What's yes. a rat? A rat is uh, something that somebody put in at the last minute that not it never came up for discussion generally beforehand, so, and people weren't aware that it was in there. Not everybody was aware. So it could be a, a, an education bill, and all of a sudden, you know, it could be like a funding for a project, correct? Or it's um, it's not favorably looked on. I, I'm fascinated by coming from the municipal side uh, to the legislature, the process, you know, and how with the municipal side, it's takes a little quicker sure. um, and uh, the process the committee process and then it gets changed and goes to another committee it's like a pipeline and I know we can refer folks to the how a bill becomes a law because it's a really interesting process and it is a part um, I mean if it needs to be uh, if, if another committee needs to look at it because it has some sort of relationship it's quite a complicated right. process and you have to work um, with both sides of the aisle and well, reach out to your colleagues at the committee level sometimes we're talking on the floor or you know Kevin comes into the chamber in the house chamber and talks about a bill it is extensive and, and complicated one thing people don't know is that Connecticut, all the committees are joint. So it's House and Senate. So it cuts down on some of the time. House and Senate uh, senators work together on a committee. So there's not two aging committees like there is in, in Washington. There's only one, and you guys work together. We're, we're very unique in that sense that and there's only one public hearing from that committee. So you don't have a public hearing in the House and a public hearing in the Senate. So in that respect, thank goodness, because uh, you know we would be a full-time legislature if we, if we right. didn't do it that way in, in Hartford. And just to edify folks at home, there are 151, this is Civics 101, 151 representatives based on population. Um, I, I solely represent Simsbury. And there are 36, 36 senatorial senators. district. Kevin's the 8th, and I'm the 16th district. So um, I think it's important to tell people Okay, you know, so I'm, now I'm going to end the civics lesson. We okay. just, we're, we're sort of running out of time, but I wanted to, <clears throat> in the remaining few minutes, I wanted to give each of you to sum up what you hope most to achieve in this session from your perspective. Kevin, let's start with you. Well, from my perspective, I, um, mine's purely uh, fiscal, I think. Um, we have a, a budget surplus this year. Uh, I would like to see us use uh, some of that surplus to mitigate a, a deficit that's being projected two years out, because if we don't start attacking it in a small way now, I think it's going to grow bigger. Um, we should listen to our, our business community about um, you know, reducing some of the regulations, expediting some of the permitting process. Mm -hmm. But the other focus I have is doing something with mental health because I don't mm -hmm. think we, I think that was missing out of our last year's uh, focus. So I really like to do something with uh, mental health, whether it's more access or 
uh, how to get these people to help. Uh, the, well, there's been a task force that's been working right. very hard. I you know, actually watched some of that. You know, that's the problem. We have too many task forces in Hartford, but it, we, we need to take action. The, actually, the mental health task force, right. I think, is, is coming up with some, is really focusing, especially good. for for young people. It's focused. You'll, you'll, you'll hear about it. I'm glad to hear it. that, yeah. then. Good. I've, I actually watched a hearing the other day. John, um, I would um, agree with, 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 with Senator Whitkos that we are just facing desperate financial times, and Connecticut continues not to be... Um, uh, business friendly, senior friendly, young people friendly, and um, this year, you know, we hope to really um, focus on uh, you know cutting spending and um, but we you know continue to work on mental health. We're never done with that issue, right. as, as Kevin points out. I mean, that was critical. We we did uh, address a lot of it, but that is a a huge nut to crack. I continue to be fascinated with aging issues, um, as you probably know. I'm working on um, a statewide water, water plan, right. uh, which has become. A really intriguing issue for me, and, and Kevin's been very supportive to protect our Farmington River and all our natural resources. So that continues uh, to be a priority. And of course, we both uh, want to make sure our kids have the best uh, education possible, and that's always uh, a top priority. Mm -hmm. So the work is never is, ends. Uh, never ends, but we yeah. enjoy it. Well, I've really enjoyed having the two of you here. It has been a civics lesson this time. I'm hoping that um, we can, uh, halfway through the session or three quarters sure, away, sure. come yeah, back so again anytime. and talk. It's been uh, it's been really delightful, uh, and I'm so glad Thanks you came. Thanks for having and us. I thank hope you. the public actually learned something. Thank you very um, much. And so our time is up, and I want to thank everyone here at SCTV, in addition to our guests, our volunteer. Uh, Althea Greeny, who has actually run three cameras today. Because, well, I'm not going to explain oh, yeah. why. Um, uh, thank you again to my guest, thank John you, Dominique and uh, Kevin Whitgos. Thank you. And uh, finally, uh, thank you for joining us, and uh, see you next time. I'm Dominique Avery. Watching Simsbury Community Television. Your town, your schools, your government. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.